Hello, good afternoon everyone. Today we are here in the Embassy of Democratic, uh, Federal Democratic of uh, Ethiopia and uh, we are here with His Excellency Mr. Denmeke Antafu Ambalu who is the High Commissioner for Ethiopia in India. Uh, welcome you sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I am happy to tell you that it is uh, he was uh, the Council General for Ethiopia and India and he was in Mumbai and now he is the ambassador and he is serving, uh, he is newly here and uh, we are looking forward for more bilateral trade relationships between India and Ethiopia. Okay, and before we start, I would like to give you a free, uh, brief information about Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a country, it is called as the Horn of Africa, right sir? <laughs> and uh, in Ethiopia is the uh, uh, the coffee, the coffee is originated from Ethiopia. Ethiopia has a lot of gold medalists in many Olympic games. So Ethiopia is a country of opportunities, a country, it, it is also said as the gateway to Africa. So I would like to know from you sir about a little about Ethiopia. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Ali and the Global India Business Forum for, for inviting me, giving me an opportunity to make an interview on bilateral trade between Ethiopia and India. To give information about Ethiopia, Ethiopia is one of the oldest country in Africa with ancient civilization dates back to 3,000 years old. Ethiopia is a country in Africa never colonized. It is the only independent country in Africa. And Ethiopia we call as a land of origin. It's origin of human being. Mm -hmm. The earliest remains of human being was founded in Ethiopia. That means the, uh, the, girl, the two feeted girl started working with two feet founded by archaeologists in, 1970, in 1974 that makes Ethiopia the origin of human beings, the cradle of humanity. So Ethiopia is uh, the ancestral homeland of all human beings. Because of this, we call Ethiopia a land of origin. The other, as it rightly, rightly is called, Ethiopia is the origin of coffee. Coffee is originated in Ethiopia. There is a place called Kafa, where coffee has driven its name from the place where it is originated. So coffee is Ethiopians' gift to the world. So we call Ethiopia a land of origin because origin of human being, origin of coffee. And uh, this is what I want. And other, Ethiopia is only country, the first country, to establish diplomatic relationship with India. It is the only country that opened up embassy in New Delhi from Africa for the first time. And thank you very much. It's a great information which we just got from His Excellency. And uh, to move forward, sir, I want to know about the bilateral trade relationships between India and Ethiopia. Yeah, thank you very much. Very good question. India and Ethiopia, we have a long-standing trade, commercial and economic relationship, which are centuries old and can be traced back to 2,000 years of recorded history. That means India and Ethiopia trade, start, trade relationship started in the first century AD. That means again, we, India and Ethiopia trading each other for the last 2,000 years. And the first trade in the first century, Indians are trading with Ethiopians, exporting, you know, uh, silks and uh, spices from India, and they were importing ivory and uh, gold. So our trade, commercial, economic relationship is long-lasting, it is, can be over more than 2,000 years of recorded history. And as you mentioned, today 
the trade volume is 2.8 billion US dollars. And India is the second source of import for, from Ethiopia. When we see the trade balance, we are exporting only, Ethiopian export is very minimum. We are exporting only in the 2022, 80 million. And the other 2.72 billion is Indian export to Ethiopia. That's that's a lot. That's a really good information, and I think, uh, as you said, it is a long relationship for so many years. So, also, I would like to know what are the major imports from India to Ethiopia, and what are the major uh, imports from Ethiopia to India. Yeah, thank you very much. As I've already tried to explain. When we started trading, the trade started 2000, first century AD, Indian export to Ethiopia is silk and spices. And Ethiopian export to India is ivory and gold. Today, the major export items from India to Ethiopia is drugs and pharmaceuticals. Second, iron and steel. Uh, third, machinery and equipment. Equipment, machinery of different agricultural machinery, industrial machinery, construction machinery, ma and equipment of different type. And the fourth, metals. And the list continues. But the top four Indian export to Ethiopia, drugs and pharmaceuticals, iron and steel, machinery and equipment, metals and so on. And Ethiopian export to India is mainly pulses and spices, precious and semi-precious stones, laser and laser products, and some vegetables and seeds. These are Ethiopian export to India. These are the major trading commodities, trading products between the two countries. The importers and exporters who are interested in uh, expanding their business in Ethiopia can always think of these sectors and they can explore their businesses in these sectors in Ethiopia. Okay, so now also I want to know what is the contribution or what is the uh, help of the government and the Chamber of Commerce uh, to improve this bilateral trade. How is their contribution in this? Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, there is a huge support from the government and from with the chambers as well. You know, the government role is to facilitate the trade relationship between the two countries. The government in this regard, both governments have put in place a mechanism which can support, which can facilitate, which can enhance, which can increase the trade between India and Ethiopia. First, both countries have signed trade agreements in 1997. This trade agreement signed between Ministry of Trade and of Ethiopia and the Ministry of Commerce and the Industry of Ethiopia. Second, there is a joint trade committee. That means every two years, the Ministry of Trade of Ethiopia and the Ministry of Commerce of India, government officials sit down and review the trade relation between the two countries. They discuss the ways, what is the problem existed, and they come up with a way forward to solve the problems and come up with a new mechanism that can increase the trade between the two countries. The third mechanism is Joint Business Council. This is the business council, the Joint Business Council is between Indian Chamber of Commerce, FIKI, and with Ethiopian Chamber of Commerce. And the fourth, and the, uh, yeah, the, the fourth, uh, the, the fourth which I've already mentioned. So, from the government side, 
the government had put in a place mechanisms which can help and in facilitating the trade between the joint the trade co the trade agreement between the two ministries joint trade committee between the two ministries joint business council this is a from the government side from the business clients, there is ample opportunity for chambers to enter into agreement with the Ethiopian Chamber of Commerce. Both the chambers of the two countries, the private, they can forge a relationship, they can forge partnership and a collaboration that would enable you know, the business community of the two countries to increase their trade the trade, uh, the import and the export and investment between the two countries. So there is huge opportunity existence for the Chamber of Commerce to enhance, to, to support the business community between the two countries. The, the first and the most important is like what, you know, Global India uh, uh, Forum had did was organizing seminars on trade opportunity, investment opportunity between the two countries, as you did in Pune in the month of October. So not only that, seminars, organizing workshops, conferences, and participation in exhibitions. This would enable the business community to get updated and authenticated the right information about the opportunity existing in Ethiopia and that of in India. So by doing so, we can, you know, the business, the chambers can do a lot in order to support in, you know, in, 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 our, in our effort to enhance and further boost the trade and the economic relationship between the two countries. Thank you, sir. I think this is a very important information and always the embassy is supportive for such activities. So we thank on behalf of Global India Business Forum also for the support, the way of support embassy and all the officials from uh, Ethiopian embassy give to improve this, organize this seminars, organize this uh, trade uh, activities. So now... Uh, thank you thank very you. much. You know, uh, enhancing the trade economic relationship between Ethiopia and India is one of the top pillar of our embassy. We are very happy to be associated with you know Global India Business Forum, and uh, we are more than happy to work together with you. And uh, I would like also the Global India Business Forum not only to organize seminars workshops in India, but I also request you to organize a business delegation to Ethiopia. The other way is not only getting information here, but the business community has to go there and get the right information from the, the grassroots at the country. So what you are doing here is very, very commendable. You are helping both the business community of India here, but you have to go to Ethiopia and meet the business community there. Yes. So when you take a business delegation to Ethiopia, you are taking them to go to Ethiopia to discuss with business community in Ethiopia. So for that, I can assure you, our embassy's full support and assistance to ensure your or business delegation to Ethiopia a grand success. And I appeal for all Indian business community who are members of you know, the Global India Business Forum to join the forum in organizing a business delegation to Ethiopia. Not only here, they have to go and meet and discuss and forge you know, the business relationship with the Ethiopian counterparts. And I thank you very much. Hello Hi. friends, I am Dr. Jitendra Joshi, the founder and global president for the Global India Business Forum, the very fast moving organization GIBF and doing a lot of activity for many countries. 
and uh, as you just listened uh, to uh, our uh, secretary general the colleague gadkari was speaking to his excellency mr ambalu and we are very happy to be associated with global india business forum when i was the consul general of ethiopia in mumbai i think 6 5 years back yes and uh, since then i'm in close touch with the global india business forum i think i'm the first from foreign countries to become the honorary member of the global <laughs> india business forum and i am very happy to be associated with you yeah thank you very much sir so africa is such a large continent actually it is one of the biggest continent in the world 54 countries the size of africa is also huge like the 10 times bigger than india uh, the population is also almost over 1.3 billion but against population if we see the size the size is really big and the africa is now the called as the land of opportunity the future of the world is africa and definitely sir it is important when we talk about specific about the ethiopia as you rightly mentioned the ethiopia is the man kind the origin is there the coffee origin is there ethiopia is the only country who never been colonized and we are so happy the there are warriors the people are warriors like and i think that is the main reason that unity is also so big apart from that uh, now it is the second largest country in africa in terms of population and the growth wise also because the fastest growing economy in africa is uh, ethiopia so we just want to know now lot of opportunity is already there lot of investment actually what is come to ethiopia will you please throw some focus on what are the different investment already done by indian companies there in ethiopia Yeah, uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, Ethiopia, as you rightly say, it is the second largest population in Africa, one point more than twenty million population. Yeah. It is one of you know the largest, one of the fastest growing economy in the world. Even during the COVID time, yeah. the Ethiopian economy continued showed resilience of. registering more than 6.5% economic growth and uh, it is because of this it is a huge you know market it is a huge market it is the the, the middle income class is growing up and the ethiopian economy the gdp is now more than 165 billion the fourth largest gdp in africa and the per capita income of ethiopian is 1540 usd again it had tripled for the last 5 years so it is a huge largest second largest in terms of population you know the fastest growing economy in africa in terms of the economic size the fourth largest economy in africa and in terms of per capita income we have now joined the middle income class yeah. so it is a huge market and the government of ethiopia has taken a lot of initiatives in order to encourage you know foreign direct investment to ethiopia the government is giving both physical and non physical incentives for foreign investors and there are also other measures being taken by the government to make ethiopia a business and investment friendly countries yeah so the liberalization and the privatization measures and the measure taken by the government to improve the doing business environment in ethiopia have been another factor which attracts foreign direct investment in addition to huge market growing market economy and the commitment of the government is what the other major factors for investment when it comes to india indians are the second largest foreign investor in ethiopia oh. and uh, ethiopia is now becoming the prime destination the prime favorable destination for the indian companies right. because of many reasons There are more than 650 Indian companies oh, with quite big number. Yes, with a registered capital of 5 billion US dollars. Mm-hmm. More than 3.5 to 4 billion have already invested in Ethiopia companies. 
And many of them, 67% of them are in manufacturing sectors. 13% of these are in agriculture. Okay. And the others are in consultancy and the service sector. Professional Yes. And so, Indians are being had a repetition of being the second largest investors in Ethiopia. They have created job opportunity for Ethiopia for more than 75,000 Ethiopians. So, this uh, Indian investment in Ethiopia is increasing. Even during the COVID time, when there was no, you know, uh, movement and everything is locked, and uh, you know there are more than thirty-five Indian companies who went to Ethiopia. Do even during the COVID time, oh. who are invested in Ethiopia? This shows how Ethiopia becoming the prime favorable destination for the Indian companies to invest. So this is why this is the status and the updated information about the Indian investment in Ethiopia. Well, friend, see, the, the 650 companies are already there uh, in Ethiopia, even though there are in many countries, many potentials are available. But definitely when 650 Indian companies in the different manufacturing sector are already there, so it proves that the government support is strongly there. And the companies, those who are already there, I think they are happy companies as they are already invested, they are earning money. And uh, I think this is the answer the, for the many uh, Indian investors also because uh, many of them think about whether the political stability is there, my money is secured or not. And I think uh, this is very, very important. So I just want to know, sir, uh, for many Indian businessmen, those who want to come uh, in future also. Uh, this question in mind uh, that whether my uh, investment will be stable, whether I will earn more money or not, how long I should be there, political stability, uh, we, you can just tell something about that so that that confidence building is also very much important even though uh, right now already companies are there. For the future investors, I think this will give a more boost as a uh, support and the confidence building will happen with uh, uh, you are uh, uh, enlightening uh, thoughts. Okay, thank you very much. Very pertinent questions. And being a race is true for any companies going abroad. They, they, might, they want to make sure that their investment, their money should be, be secured. Yes. When it comes to Ethiopia, and, uh, in Ethiopia, you know, in constitution, private, you know, investment, private, you know, sector is granted. Mm -hmm. No one can expropriate it. First, the first guarantee for the security for their money to be secured is Ethiopia constitutions. Mm -hmm. Second, Ethiopia is signatory and a member of MEGA, multilateral investment in you know, protection agreement. So the first guarantee is Ethiopian investment, you know, constitution. Second, Ethiopia is, you know, the signatory of MECA. This is another second guarantee for those companies who have any doubt about the security. The, the security. And the third is we have signed, and, you know, bilateral investment promotion and the protection agreement with the government of India. So Indian companies make sure that both Ethiopian and Indian government had signed investment promotion and the protection agreement. So their investment in Ethiopia is protected, not only by Ethiopian constitutions, not only by mega agreement, but by the agreement side between the government of India and Ethiopia. We have also signed but avoidance of double taxation agreement okay. between the two countries. If Indians invest in Ethiopia, they don't, they were not required to pay tax in two countries. Mm -hmm. Avoidance of double taxation. So there is legal mechanism in place which give guarantee for Indian or any companies coming to do business invest in Ethiopia. One. Protection guarantees Ethiopian investment 
uh, Ethiopian constitution. The second guarantee is we are member signatory of you know, Liga. Third guarantee is the agreement we signed, investment protection agreement with the government of India. These are the legal mechanisms which are in place, which makes India companies to feel more secure. If it is not, you know, India cannot go and invest. It is one of the safest places for foreign investment. As you have mentioned, Ethiopians are friendly and we are looking for investment. There is no problem, no question of about being doubted because all these legal, you know, protection mechanisms are in place. Right. Uh, so, our businessman, Indian friends can always think about, I think this uh, answer by His Excellency is self-explanatory that you should not have any second thought about uh, uh, security uh, uh, in Ethiopia. See, you should not compare your business with all the African countries at a time because many times it is a misconception that it overall Africa, but you should think about each country in Africa separately. So, Africa like uh, India in each state also separate separate uh, measures are there. The similar way each African country is uh, doing well. At the same time, the country like Ethiopia is really doing well. Sir, the, as you said, there are a lot of companies are coming. Yes, definitely good that there are a lot of security measures are already there. And I think this will be really helpful for the new companies or the new investment those who want to come. At the same time, uh, there is a very important uh, question is about which areas of investment uh, because there is a, a lot of uh, sometimes confusion also people want to invest but they are not really clear in which area my investment should go whether I will really earn good money for the future of that investment. So please uh, guide our Indian business one that these are the specific areas where Ethiopia is looking for the investment for, for the next 10 years and they will definitely uh, invest also, they will earn money also, they will create job also which will be win-win situation for them and Ethiopia also. Yeah, thank you very much and uh, as I say Ethiopia or the one, the five top priority sectors identified by the government of Ethiopia for the coming five, ten years are the following. One, it is agriculture. Ethiopia, agriculture, we are agrarian. In Ethiopia, we have more than 49 sub-agroecologic zones. Okay. And in Ethiopia, we, that means we can produce different cereals, different agricultural products. So one of the priority sectors uh, in Ethiopia where we are looking is agriculture, floriculture, horticulture. Okay. Ethiopia is the second largest exporter of you know, cut flour okay. to European markets. So we have different uh, fertile soil of different type to produce different types of, you know, you know uh, not only agricultural products, but also horticulture and the floriculture. Seasonal base. Yes. Best one season. So best one season. Okay. And the second uh, area is which we are looking for is manufacturing. Especially in manufacturing, we are looking for the pharmaceutical sectors. Okay. Because we are importing 80% of the pharma and the drug demands from abroad. Mm -hmm. So the government want to fill that gap by encouraging Indian companies to come and set up pharmaceutical products manufacturing units. For this, the government had already built industrial parts only to produce for the manufacturing of pharma products. You don't go here and there. Already the industrial parts already established by the government using modern apps. So we are looking for the pharma and the manufacturing in different sectors. Like we are looking for agro processing, industrial food processing, and the textile, and the garment, laser, laser products, and so on. But our top priority in the manufacturing sector is in pharmaceutical and agro processing. Okay. We have four 
agro processing industrial parks. So investors should not go here and there in search of land because the government had already built special economic zones, industrial parks, for agro processing, for okay. food processing, okay. for the farming. It has already built up for you know textile and the garments. It has already built for you know farmers, I say, and others for the mixed purpose. Okay. So we are looking especially those in manufacturing sector, in the pharmaceutical, food processing, agro processing, and so on. Okay. And the third is ICT information technology. We have, the, we have already in the National Digital Transformation Plan, Digital 2025, to make it appear digital. Our digital plan is more inclusive digitalization of the Ethiopian economy. So for this, the government has built up IT village, industrial park for use of IT. So those who are looking for, they cannot go here and there Look for you know hiring a renting building, you know renting you know leasing lands and so on because the government had built IT village using modern art of technology as it has done for the pharma, it has also built for the IT. Indians had you know proved to be the leaders in the IT sector. Yes. So there is a huge possibilities for the Indian companies to come to do in IT, in different sectors of information technology. Okay. So the IT sector is also village is in Addis Ababa. They can go, look at it, visit, sign a MOU, and they can ship the product and they start doing business. And the fourth is mining. Ethiopia is endowed with different mineral resources mineral resource for construction, industry, and so on. The country of opportunities, I can say, are in the manufacturing se sector, in the pharma sector. So the people, the businessmen, those who really want to grow, I think this is the right country to go for Ethiopia. So as you suggested, many sectors. Uh, I just want to know that uh, infrastructure and construction, these are the two important areas uh, what do you suggest the opportunity for our uh, builders and the infrastructure guys, those who are keen for uh, such kind of projects, uh, maybe railway projects, air, uh, airport constructions, building construction, residential projects, uh, even the office construction. So just want to know about the opportunity in these areas also, sir. Thank you. Uh, this is also another area where we are looking. Uh, Ethiopia has said the economy is one of the fastest growing economy. For the last 10 15 years, the, the growth, the registered economic growth for more than double digit. And then for the last five years, it continuously, you know, even during the COVID growing. That means when the economy grows, you know, it needs the infrastructure development yeah. is key. So this is an area where we are also looking for Indian, Indian companies. I know there are uh, 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 few Indian companies, especially in the road construction, yes. and uh, in other, you know, some are in consultancy, and some are also in construction, roads, and so on. So we, we are looking for Indians, again, those who are in this area, to come and participate. In the construction, they can go, they can be, get investment license in the construction level one, there is a level, Yes. So if they fulfill that level construction, you know, level one, they can get investment license and they can, you know, build a lot of, you know, the, the, the you know, infrastructure projects which is coming by, by the government. So this is an area where we are encouraging Indians to come and invest in, in, in to, to take part and participate in the infrastructure development of the country. Great. Uh, Sir, another three points actually I want to discuss with you. Uh, Ethiopia is a, is a size wise is a big country. At the same, uh, it is a landlocked country. So, uh, for the logistics activity, uh, for the port, uh, for the dry port, or the, for the ocean, uh, so what you want to uh, throw light on logistical problems maybe, 
or what is the solution so that the investment which is coming there uh, so they are rest assured ki, okay this landlock uh, is not a problem uh, if i do investment there this is my first uh, question uh, second is about uh, the investment actually uh, i think that there is about 200000 uh, dollar uh, investment needed for the minimum investment needed uh, uh, for the any one who want to come there and if you want to come jointly i think 1 150 100 uh, dollar is required uh, so this is the second thing and the third thing about the banking sector the financial arrangement uh, because most of the time maybe bank are about the 100 percent collateral so these are the uh, uh, questions in the mind of people also so just so want to know from your side so, uh, how the uh, ethiopian government uh, is thinking from that angle to support in this area landlock uh, if any problem is there then the uh, investment uh, in collateral is required any banking support uh, for that financial yeah. support yeah uh, let me start with uh, financial uh, uh, support and the investment you know requirement and uh, yeah. some others yes. when you come a foreigner to come to invest in Ethiopia the minimum capital requirement is 200,000 USD if he wants to go by himself the investment. They do, you know. Yes. Yeah. If he wants to go with joint venture with Ethiopians, then it is the minimum capital requirement is 150,000. If those who are in consultancy service, then for, for them, the, the minimum capital is 100,000. Okay. And if you joint venture, it is 50,000. So this is a minimum capital requirement. The government of Ethiopia is providing financial assistance, okay. facilitating you know, loans for those who are engaging in productive investment sectors. There is Development Bank of Ethiopia. It is a government bank, okay. which is only providing loan for those who are in investment, for investment. Okay. for product investment, for both local and for foreigners. So if an Indian company wants to invest in Ethiopia, he can access 50% of his project from the Development Bank of Ethiopia. 50% from him, and he can also access 50% from the Development Bank of Ethiopia. Also, the Development Bank of Ethiopia, the government is providing access for lease financing and there is capital financing as well. Even an Indian company can get a loan, had a loan to get to access loan from abroad mm -hmm. for their projects in Ethiopia. And they can remit that from their divided sum. Maybe Exim Bank for all yeah. So, yeah. so there is also Exim Bank of India in Ethiopia and from others. Yes. So the government is providing such kind of you know, loan facility, facilitates loan for Indian company. 50% of the project they can access from the Ethiopian Development Bank. Okay. This is the support. One, and, uh, and uh, the other, what you have also raised is, now we are opening up uh, for in, uh, the finance and the telecommunication sector are now privatized. Okay. Before they are monopoly of the Ethiopian government. Now, foreign telecommunic telecommunication sector, foreign telecommunication providers are already entered into Ethiopian markets. Okay. And those who are in telecommunication sector, we advise them, we encourage them to come and make use of this newly opened up telecommunication sector for foreign. In telecommunication, they can come up with a number of you know, telecommunication services, including the IT. There is huge, huge possibility existing for Indian companies. Okay. Again, we have opened up the banking sector. Already the directives is being prepared. So the foreign banks are very recently coming to open up an office in Ethiopia. So until now, the Development Bank of Ethiopia is providing 
and now the foreign banks were allowed to come and open a branch there, operate in Ethiopia. So accessing loan financing would not be a problem for for those who are interested to, to, to invest. And with regard to logistics, yes. you know we are using almost more than 90% of our import and export, we are using the port of Djibouti. Djibouti port. Okay. Yes. Here in Djibouti port, we have a railway. Okay. It is a electric, railway yes, a railway yeah. from direct from Djibouti to Addis Ababa. Then not only that, we have dry ports mm -hmm. set up in Mojo near to Addis and in major part of the country, the dry ports are already established. So there is no need of delaying the once it reaches Djibouti, then the, the, the products or the machinery equipment can easily be transported by the railway right. and it can be also be stationed or the process you know the paperwork the process can be done at the dry port either in Addis in Mojo very near and in other places where there are major dry ports we are also accessing to use other ports and the government is negotiation with other countries as well. But logistics of, as of today, as of now, is not a problem. There is a railway, you know, electricity, driver ele uh, railway from Djibouti to Addis. Okay. And we have also a special economic zone very close to Indreda, very close to Djibouti. So those who are interested, they can also go and set up in that special economic zone. It is for multiple purposes. Yeah or multiple you know, uh, manufacturing units. So they can easily, it is 300 away from Djibouti to Dredawa as well. So logistics is not a problem at all. So we encourage them to come and make use of this, this opportunity. So Fred, if you can see uh, the logistics also in the problem. So landlocked country is, many people say landlocked country is a problem. So there is no problem in Ethiopia. Because uh, you can't say it is a landlocked country because Djibouti is the next aside country to Ethiopia. There are tags between two countries, they have the port and you can easily transport your containers from different parts of the world uh, to that Djibouti port. From there it is by railway, you can come to Addis Ababa. So I think that the logistics is also not a problem. And his excellency has rightly suggested the finance is also not a problem as the Ethiopian government is proactive. Many bankers, they are now suggesting to give loans also. So this is the right time uh, that logistics is also not an issue, finance is not an issue, government uh, is not an issue, security is also not an issue. So this is the, almost we say this is the right location, right destination to go for it. So the last two points I just want to know about, uh, about the G20. Recently India uh, was the chairman of the G20. Uh, G20 is a really good organization. And for last many years, uh, actually, the African Union should be a part of uh, uh, G20. So this was a, just a discussion. And in the last two, three uh, meetings of uh, in the different the G20 summit, it was not discussed seriously. But in India, when India is the chairman of this uh, G20, I think our Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi, uh, along with our Foreign Minister Mr. Jayashankar, took this subject very seriously, along with other G20 country uh, leaders. And this was a very big news come up that now African Union was a part of G20 with uh, great effort from Mr. Narendra Modi also. So just want to know about uh, this contribution of India for the support uh, for the African Union and probably helping uh, to Ethiopia also. Thank you very much, very good, and uh, we, Ethiopia, as Ethiopian and as an African, we are deeply grateful, sincerely, for the government of, of India, especially for the Prime Minister, for taking such, you know, noble initiative, yes. and uh, for the relentless effort made by the Prime Minister to persuade the other G20 member countries for to include African Union, for inclusion of African Union as a permanent member of G20. Great. You know, Africa, it is always a talk about G20 and other countries. In a number of forums, they were talking about Africa, but Africa is not there. 
Yeah. They are talking about development under developing countries, but where the developing or underdeveloped countries are not there. So that is why the effort made by the government of India, this is, you know, a huge legacy of India. Yeah. And uh, Indian is going to be remembered, not now, for the generation to come in the history yeah. of Africa and African Union, when it comes to G20. Yeah. Why? Because, you know, Africa is 1.4 billion population, sure. 55 countries. Yeah. So, when Africa was included in the G20 means the issue of 1.4 billion Africans' aspirations and needs and demands would be properly discussed by themselves. So, different perspectives of Africa. When they are discussing about the development, the African person, the African aspiration has been, will be presented by Africans. So it is because of this, we are really grateful and this is what we are expecting. And this is a great achievement in the history of G20 where India made history by, by, by including African Union, by, by you know, uh, as permanent member. This will be a new path, new era for Africa yes. to grow together yes. along with the developing countries. Yes, yes. And the, my last point sir, about the BRICS now, now the globalization is there, so many things happen around the globe. Uh, final ultimate thing is the business. There is no rivalry but the business. Everybody want to grow and everyone want to do progress, yes. development. So BRICS is another format now along with South Africa was uh, the part in Africa along with Argentina, Russia, China and India again. And now uh, this is the good news that Ethiopia is also a member of uh, BRIC. So uh, just the last uh, point about now uh, this is the new development globally and Ethiopia is a part of that uh, in Africa. So what do you think sir, how Ethiopia will contribute uh, for BRIC development and the development of the African countries also. Yeah, thank you very much. Again, uh, thank you again. Our time, our, uh, I'd like to extend our thanks and the gratitude for the government of India for giving support and reserved support, a continuous, persistent support for it given to Ethiopia again to become a member of you know, BRICS. So when Ethiopia joined BRICS, because Ethiopia, as said, is the only independent country in Africa. Yes. And if Ethiopia is not colonized, Ethiopia is a member of the League of Nations. Yeah. Where many countries are under colonialism. So. And when the United Nations organization was initiated in 1944, Ethiopia is also the founding member of the United Nations. Ethiopia is a founding member of a number of international and regional organizations because of its Ethiopia's history. Never colonized. Not only Ethiopia never colonized, Ethiopia has supported the liberation, independent, freedom movement of African countries. Because of this, Ethiopia has, you know, high place in the history of the people of the Africa in the world. So that is why Ethiopia became again the historic significance of Ethiopia. So by becoming BRICS, joining is gives Ethiopia ample opportunity. One, Ethiopia can access, you know, a number of trade, investment, infrastructure, you know, technology, transfer, and other, you know, you know, uh, other, you know, what is available in the BRICS. Cool. It will enable her to expand their trade with the three countries, to, to trade with them, to export and to import, to expand her, her trade. It will enable Ethiopia to promote the investment in you know, opportunity among the BRICS countries. Yes. And it will enable you know, the, the BRICS countries, members to come and invest in Ethiopia. So it can increase the Ethiopian investment. Ethiopia can also, you know, uh, gain uh, in terms of technology transfer, knowledge and technology transfer. So there is huge opportunity for Ethiopia's growth and development. By joining the BRICS, Ethiopia can play not only for Ethiopia but 
can bring the issue of Africa, yes. African development issue. By doing so, Ethiopia can promote the African developmental aspiration and contribute not only to the Africa, but to the well-being of the people around the world. So Ethiopia being the BRICS, as joining the BRICS shows how confident yeah. the world lead on Ethiopia is, since BRICS is mainly for economic. Yes. So that is also sends another you know, message yes. for only business people to have a trust and a confidence in Ethiopia, as Ethiopia being member of the, the BRIC countries. Yeah. And thank you very much. Very good question. So, uh, friends, uh, we are uh, very happy that His Excellency uh, uh, has given such a good answers and a very confident answer about all the misconception about Africa, misconception about uh, some Ethiopia. So we discussed today about non-colonization of Ethiopia, such a strong people, yeah, such a strong community actually, where actually they are the only one in Africa who never colonized till the time the world is now uh, preferring them as a part of brick for the new economy which is developing. And we are so happy that Indian businessmen along with Global India Business Forum, they can come together. So GIBF is always committed to do a lot of programs uh, uh, for Ethiopia, for many other countries. But definitely uh, the future, as you suggested, sir, the a uh, lot of delegations also needs to be planned. And definitely GIBF will plan a good delegations uh, soon. And we are uh, definitely promote Ethiopia as Ethiopia is close to our heart and uh, your support is always there so thank you very much sir for your all the answers and we will ensure uh, that ethiopia and india bilateral trade uh, along with your help and the new investment uh, will be a part of you thank you so much sir. thank you uh, very much uh, and i'm very happy again and uh, uh, for global india business forum what we are doing in promoting africa in different parts of you know uh, india and giving you know access for Indian companies about opportunity existing in different parts of Africa, and uh, we are very happy. We participated in a number of you know forums you have organized, and uh, we are more than happy also to, to participate in the other coming you know forums. Uh, since you have organized plenty of you know uh, here forums, business forums. And uh, the idea of again now going to Africa, you promoted Africa very well here among Indian business communities. But you, the in, you have should go take the Indian communities, what you promoted, what we promoted, let they go and see, let they go. The Indian business communities had discussed with us, with ambassadors and diplomats. Yeah, yeah. But that's not the end. Yes. The end, ultimate end will be they should go and discuss with business community in Ethiopia. When they are discussing, they can forge a relationship, yes. partnership, collaboration. Then it can cement the, the trade investment relationship between the two countries. So I again once upon call and I invite all Indian companies to join the Global India Business Forum delegation to Ethiopia and we are more than happy to assist you. On this, on, from November 19 to 22, we have organized two business delegations to Ethiopia. Okay. One is 40 pharma companies, more than 60 representatives from 40 companies had visited, had visited Ethiopia from November 19 to 22. They met Minister of Health, Minister of Industry, the Minister of you know, all relevant Ethiopian ministry, and they also have met one-to-one -one with more than 125 Ethiopian business people. There is also other business delegation from organized by India Trade Economic Organization ITO, 80 members, they went to Ethiopia. The first one is only for pharma, 40 companies. Yes. 
The other is from different sectors. We arranged them. They had a very good relationship. They, uh, they met all government officials, Minister of Trade and Industry, Investment Commission. They visited, you know, industrial parks, the IT, the other industrial parks. They also met Ethiopian business people, one-to-one -one business people. Both have a very successful business visit to Ethiopia. Now, the third is Global India Business Forum. So, we have organized two, and the third is now we are looking for, and we, I request all Indian business people to come and join Global India Business Forum, and we can arrange very excellent business trip to Ethiopia. Meeting with the government officials, trade and investment, industry, and one-to-one -one business meeting with Ethiopian business people. And thank you very much. Rest assured our support. We are more than happy to assist and support you. And thank you very much. Thank you so much.